and we are recording so welcome and over to you well thank you very much jerry that was very uh, useful so what we'd like people to do initially is to think about what your dream is as we start emerging from these lockdowns just type a few words into the text chat just to let us know what your thoughts are on that A meal out. <laughs> yeah, France. Oh, yeah. Choices. Great answer. Wow. Getting out in new venues. Dream a holiday getaway. Travel again. Hugs. Travel to see my family. <laughs> Hot tub. Oh, live theater again. Sports events and stadiums. Go to Trader Joe's. Yay. <laughs> yes. Also to keep some of the nice things from the last year. That's great, that's great. Travel abroad, theater and concert, more theater. We have some theater lovers here, which is great. Yeah. Visit family abroad. Cinema. TJ's early in the morning by yourself, not as much fun. Well, it might be fun for you. <laughs> Yeah, they, they just uh, announced the closing of the Cinerama Dome in Hollywood, which is oh, tragedy. A, yeah. a real tragedy. Yeah, we used to go there for our crazy action adventure movies. So. Yeah, big, big premieres, you know, things like Spider-Man when that first came out and uh, various others. It's, it's, it's a great place. And if you're joining us late, uh, just notice we have the question on screen. What's your dream as we start emerging from lockdowns? You're invited to type something into the chat as your response to that question. Travel to Northern Michigan. Great. Robin, would you like to go ahead and move ahead? Yep, let's do that. Okay, great. Oops, I gotta make this work. Here we go. So the topic of our session today is type and process work. And to get the ball rolling, I'm going to introduce you to Vicky Jo. Vicky Jo Varner is, happens to be my wife, as many of you know. She did her qualifying program for MBTI in 1996, and uh, she's an MBTI master practitioner. She is also Interstrength certified with Linda Behrens. She has a PhD in depth psychology with an emphasis on Jungian and archetypal studies. She is formerly a professor at the University of Philosophical Research and a type discovery artist is what she calls herself. She's also a professional life coach with numerous qualifications stacked up in, around that, uh, various letters there. I won't bother explaining what they all are. You can ask afterwards if you want to. And in return, I'd like to introduce my husband, Robin Wiley. Robin's qualifying program was in 1992. He also is an MBTI master practitioner and inner strength certified with Linda. He was the secretary of the South Australian APT chapter for three years, the past president of the Los Angeles APT chapter. And he is a, still a corporate trainer and an IT consultant. And he trained as a coactive life coach with uh, CTI as I did, but he didn't go as far as I did. And of course, many more things. So we'll start by designing our alliance as coaches. This is something that we like to do at the top of the sessions. So we're going to throw out some agreements and hopefully these will work for you. Uh, we want your permission to teach you about this topic today. If you can wave your hand around, if you're going to give us permission, that would be great. Jerry can kind of keep an eye on a thumbs up. That's good. Okay. Do you agree to participate in the breakouts? When we go into the breakouts much later, again, show of hands. Let me know you'll participate please, yes. Uh, I want you to be edgy. The activity we're doing today may be a little edgy for some people, so I need you to agree to be a little bit edgy with us. So again, show of hands, will you agree to be edgy? And... Yes, one of the things that we also like to talk about is that there's no illusion of uh, perfection in this whole thing. In other words, you have permission to fail 
and fail wildly, wildly if that should happen. In other words, there's no right or wrong. We're not going to give you points for anything like that. And I also have to say that the material that we're teaching, we should do this in a half day workshop or full day even. So the time is going to go by so fast. So if we're racing a little bit, that's the reason why. So let's now explain the agenda to you. We're going to be um, defining several terms and then we're going to work with them. We're also going to attempt to be more experiential or phenomenological, depending upon your way of using the term, rather than intellectual. So it's going to be very much uh, hands on if possible. And We'd like you to. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> you're going to want to have some uh, paper nearby, a little something to write with. And then if you can just make sure you've got room to move around a little bit, that you're not too boxed in in your uh, seat, that would be terrific. OK, so what we want to do first is introduce you to Arnold Mendel. Could you raise your hand if you've heard of Arnold Mendel before? Yes, you people. OK, great. So. Um, Arnold Mendel was born in 1940. He's an American author, therapist, and teacher. He was into transpersonal psychology, body psychotherapy, social change, and spirituality. And he interpreted concepts from physics and mathematics in psychological terms. Now, he trained as a Jungian analyst at the Jung Institute in Zurich, and he was analyzed by Franz Ricklin and Marie-Louise von Franz. You may know that latter name. He extended Jungian dream analysis to body symptoms, and then he became the founder of process-oriented psychology, also known as process work. And then he and his wife, Amy, founded the Process Work Institute in 1990 in Portland, Oregon. Now, he developed this idea of deep democracy, which is so applicable to type. I love it. We'll cover that in another session, I hope. He's also the author of 20 books. And the material that we're working with today came primarily from this book. It's called The River's Way. It's perhaps the most academic of all of his books. Now, this is just a little preview of what we're covering today, the big picture, if you will of what we're uh, gonna be talking about. Now, these little symbols will all be explained shortly. So today we're going to introduce you to process work, which actually begins wherever the client presents anything. So it might start with um, questions, for example, or problems in a relationship, or medical symptoms, stories from the day before, or dream experiences. Process work uses verbal processes, language content, body signals, and environmental situations. Now, from this kind of material, the client therapist interaction evolves. So, process work is essentially modernized Taoism. And the process worker tries to appreciate the flow of the river, they help clients adjust to this flow. Now let's define the dream body. Now Arnold Bindel believes we are always dreaming even in the daytime. So the dreams are written on the body in various ways. So with the dream body, processes are always mirrored in dreams such as illnesses and symptoms. Thus, process work is living dream work. And this gives rise to the concept of the dream body. The dream body can manifest via movements and sounds made by the physical body. The dream body is a multi-channeled information sender. And we'll talk, we'll talk more about channels later. Okay. And now, da -da -da -da, going to do a dream body activity. Now you can use the lockdown dream that you named at the top of the session to prime the pump for you or some other issue that comes up. Best of all is if you can start from a clean slate, if you can. And Robin and I are gonna be doing this with you. So uh, Jerry, if you could stop my sharing, that would be great. Um, now, if people want to, you can turn off your camera for this portion, but I'll give you gold stars if you are willing to stay on camera to uh, participate in the activity. 
So, do, you want, do you want me to stop recording at this point or not? No. Oh. Oh yes, yes. This yes. is the place. Yes. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Please stop recording at this point. Okay. So we'll just give you a minute to have some reflection about that. I think Robin went through it pretty fast. But hopefully you were able to have some kind of an experience. I did, but I've done it before, so. Okay, by show of hands, who needs more time? I cannot see all the participants. Robin, can you see all the participants? No, I can't. Um, I can only see a sort of a, a slice of them, but nobody seems to be indicating that. I'm just. Uh, Judy having... needs more time. She's holding okay. her hand up. Thank okay. You. Okay. Judy looks like she's back with us. Okay. Wow. In an ideal world, we would have taken a lot more time with all of that and really allowed you to get into it more fully, but time is not our best friend today. So what we're going to do is deconstruct what you just did with some additional definitions. Now, first thing I wanted to do is introduce you to signals. So what is a signal? A signal is a perceived piece of information which can be communicated via words, sounds, actions, gestures, and body feelings. So a signal is a momentary elementary perception in a particular mode or channel. So I'm wondering, can you spot a signal in this image? Should be fairly obvious, a couple of them actually. Now, signals usually come from within the dream body. And again, can you spot some signals happening in this image? Again, they're pretty obvious, but they aren't always. So we'd like you to reflect on what signal appeared during the dream body exercise. And if you can, just put it into the chat box. Thumbs, stretch, relaxing of muscles, great. Tightness, want to relax. Leaning tree, baby deer, rotating of hips, sense of flowing like water, swaying, release, feeling a weight on my neck that needed to lift, flowing of movement, beautiful. Beautiful. Now, what we need to do is to find some channels. Channels, here we go. So, channels are the ways information is perceived, which can be via visualization, which doesn't necessarily mean the eyes, it can also include intuitive insights. Also audition, which is the term that Mindell uses for hearing and speech and noises and music, the tone and the tempo of those noises and music, the rhythm of them and so on. Proprioception, which is a long word that simply means the sense of touch or any kind of external stimulation. And kinesthesis, which is body movements that emanate from within, like postures and gestures and dance and so on, that are visible in the outside world. Now, there are also what they call more complex channels, and these include relationship, where another person becomes the critical object of awareness, or just the world, where the focus of attention is on the outer world, the universe, foreign objects, and events. Now, Mendel provides us a diagram that shows how he conceives these channels to be arrayed 
He divided them into three main categories, which he calls body, mind, and world. This seems to map to the well-known trilogy of body, mind, and spirit, which may have been what he actually intended. And then to the topic of this conference, he provided a diagram showing what he calls the fine structures of channels, which starts to bring in Jungian typology. Mindell actually mentions Jung's theory of psychological types in his books, and he suggests that some functions may be associated with certain channels, but he doesn't give us any definite mapping of those. However, if you look at some of these, it can become fairly obvious, I think, as to which ones might map to others. And I might even claim that he has reduced type to its most basic functioning. So what channel can you see being used here? I see the visual channel. Probably there's also an auditory channel is what I'm guessing. And then what channel do you imagine is being used here? I'm assuming this is the complex channel of relationship. So the question now is, which channel do you think carried your dream body exercise signal? Put it into the chat box if you would please. Body, yeah. I saw a lot of body stuff. Body, body, body. Body. Kinesthetic, yep. I also heard some sounds from some people too who had their microphone unmuted. So there's a little bit of the audition channel as well. Visualization world. Yeah, that's what I had too. Definite images coming at me. Great. So now let's define process. Let's first note how the observer's psychological type preferences probably determines the process, which can be based on which signals are picked up which signals trigger awareness, which signals resonate with the observer, and which signals cause a reaction. So process reflects a change in perception as a result of observing a signal. And this might be called an aha, for example. An aha moment, yeah. And processes can be static or they might be moving. And processes can be described as being closer or further away from awareness. So once again, we're going to ask what processes were involved in your dream body experience? And again, put those into the chat if you could. that one might have stumped them Robin yeah that's fair enough it's it's a lot of information to process in such a short time so I know these definitions are getting a little bit tedious and this definition will be the last one I promise so we need to share the definition of edges so what is an edge? An edge essentially splits the processes into two categories called primary and secondary. Primary processes are the ones that the client identifies with, and we might call this ego. And a secondary process is where the client feels no direct association with it. We might call this non-ego or ego incompatible or in the typology terms, we might call these non-preferred functions. For instance, thinking types do not recognize their feelings or sensation types have little conscious intuition. An edge essentially is an area of discomfort. And an edge is indicated whenever resistance arises, when, when you have that, oh no, not that. 
So let's put the whole thing together and revisit the big picture once again. Today, we are teaching you about process work. It starts with a signal of some kind. The signal travels through a channel. It comes out of the channel as a process. The process hits an edge. The edge will splinter the process into primary or secondary. So that puts together all of the components that we have defined in this session. Now, I think we're Let's, way ahead of the clock, Robin. Couldn't we take more time than what um, than what you allocated? Um, we could possibly do that, yes. So we can give more time in the breakout room. I think that's probably a good, a good can thing. Can we double it? We, yeah, we could probably double it because we don't have much. Yeah, let's do that. Let's double it. Jerry, can you double it? And before we do it, <laughs> let's cover what you're going to do. Um, so we're going to have a breakout with um, four or five people in each room. And we've got 26 attendees. So maybe I think four per room would be a, a good number to do. Right. And we're going, we're going to get you to take it in turns to answer two questions. So divvy up the time as, as, as best you can. The first question is, what did you experience with the dream body exercise? And then the important part for this conference is relate your dream body experience to your type preference. Or to any type, just however, however type shows up for you. So keep an eye on the time and- so can, uh, I check, can I check how long you would like for this then now, just to make sure I get this right? Let's do 20 minutes. 20 minutes. Which will go by like gangbusters. Yeah, I'm just wondering if we should make it 16 minutes just to give us time to do fee uh, feedback at the end. Yeah. Um, he's got it. Joey, are you okay with Robin, 16? he's got it. He's got it. Okay, he's good. good. 16, good. yeah, okay. 16 yeah. minutes, so four minutes each. Right, so we have... Uh, five, six rooms then. So uh, most of them will have four and a couple of fives, I think. Okay, so I'm just going to uh, go ahead and open those rooms now. Make sure you've got the questions in mind before uh, you leave. And I know this was fast and you can talk about that in the breakout room too. It's okay. okay. Jerry, you're putting me in a breakout room. I'm going to Pass on that? Yeah, pass on it, yeah. It, it, it won't, yeah, that's okay. fine. Uh, we're going to end up with, let me see, I'll just monitor this. Is Molly? Yeah, there she goes. Okay. Robin, I think you read that visualization at like twice the speed you should have. Yeah, sorry about that. I was like, how can I tell him to slow down? <laughs> so we have, we have one room with just two people in it, Renee and David. Yeah, uh, see but that. I think that's, I think we'll, we'll, we'll leave that rather than bump them into a different yeah, room. Yeah, yeah. I know people, uh, the hosts or whatever can go around and eavesdrop. Robin, I don't know if you want to go eavesdrop. I don't know if I do. I'm still shell-shocked. I, I, sure. I tend to feel it's a bit, it, it interrupts the conversation too much myself. Yeah. That's yeah, I, I, I'd, I'd rather not do that, yeah. I was caught a little out, Robin, because number one, you're reading some of my stuff. <laughs> I know. Number I'm sorry two, I, had, I didn't have a chance to look at it before it suddenly flipped over to me. So I wasn't catching the slides as quickly. Hey, how are you? Welcome back. So, show of fingers, how was that? More fingers, the better it was. 
Yeah. Oh, hold them up. Hold them high. Let me see. Oh, lots of hands. We had to get this finger. Great. Good, good, good. I don't know how to make it so I can see everybody. Yeah, I know. There should be a way. I haven't been able to figure it out. I have to scroll down. And I can't always trust the scrolling. How was that? Show fingers, more fingers, the better it was. Finger, lots of fingers. Yes, pretty good. Okay, yeah, great. Great. Oh, I've got my monitor now set up so I can see everybody. And can I, you? Yeah, so that's I good. have to go to the next screen. So. <laughs> yeah, I've I've so how was that? Show show fingers. More fingers, the better it was. Yeah, I'm seeing lots of tens. Uh, ten. A couple of fours and fives. Five. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. A couple of eights and nines. Yeah. And yeah, not too many. Yeah, so generally positive. How many fingers did David put up? Uh, let's ten. see. Ten. <laughs> Sweet. How about Linda? <laughs> um, oh no. <laughs> You probably wanted to take no, over. No, the thing was, it was a lot of lack of, so the group experience itself is what it was a four, because there was one person hadn't, ex, hadn't experienced it, one was fully unclear on it, and I think two of us were trying to explain it to the person who was fairly unclear. <laughs> now, that's my interpretation, but we actually didn't all share, so that's part of the, so it was more about that, and then I could not hold those I, I couldn't hold the um, the relationship to the processes in my head. I had a screenshot of it, so I pulled that up, but I kind of got lost in all of that. So we were very confused about how right. it related to type. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree. It was difficult. Um, I didn't have the words in front of me, so I wasn't sure what I was doing. Great. Yeah, I liked the experience. <laughs> I, had a, I, had a, I just cut a screenshot of the, um, uh, the channels, which just help, helped a little bit to relate to the actual original exercise and how, where the awareness exercise originated. Um, it's, um, it's, I'm not familiar with Mendel or this type of work. So um, I, it, was, it was just, uh, speculating from from that how how we would uh, draw that information out of somebody um i think particularly getting to the edges was um an interesting thing because what when you're talking to someone are they aware of their type before you're looking for clues to start the process in their in their preferred dominant behaviors but um it seems there's a little bit more insight or process involved to get somebody to be uh, relating themselves to the site in this Mendel process. Well, it, le, and let me actually back up from that and say that um, I had an expectation that we as I'm assuming everyone here is a type practitioner that you have your knowledge that you're going to bring to the topic in some fashion. Mendel does not talk about it all that much. The, um, the little that we said in the couple diagrams is about all he does. So there's a piece here about, um, you know, when you're the expert versus when you're the client. So Mendel is doing, you know, how many angels dance on the head of a pin, kind of really boiling it down into the little pieces, which is why there's so many definitions. And they're kind of microscopic. Uh, and then, you, you know, you put it all together to get the thing, but you probably would not tell that to a client. Usually when you work with a client, you're looking for the signal and then you take the signal and then you start amplifying it. And then you're paying attention to like, oh, what processes are happening here and what needs to be unfolded and what kind of questions should I be asking to help that person evolve and noticing when something goes to a secondary process versus when it's a primary process. So it's, it's about stepping into their greater being without telling them all the little bits and bites. We're doing the bits and bites here because I'm assuming we're practitioners and this is useful to learn, to know how to do. Um, but I don't think it's anything, it's nothing I would ever convey to a coaching client. So you, the, the missing premise in, in, in my perception was simply that you, you've already made some kind of assessment as to their dominant uh, preferences. 
Well, my assessment would be that I'm I'm probably going to experience that in some fashion, either from our first meeting, uh, from the conversation, from where they are having resistance or the signals they notice. Uh, you know, certain types are going to notice certain signals, and other types are going to notice other signals. Um, so that's that's about our own type knowledge and, and bringing that to bear on this particular, dare I call it a model. Robin, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, I'm sort of curious to know if anybody actually did get anything out of the overall exercise and, and are able to sort of share with us what their results were, what their conclusions were, how, how they felt it related. Can, can anybody talk to that? Yeah, sure. So uh, in my group, uh, we had an ESTJ, an INFP, and an ENFP, and myself as an INFP as well. And uh, both of the ENFPs had a kind of swaying or bent trends. Mm. Um, so like, oh, wow. the that came out from it. Look at that. Mm -hmm. And uh, the ESTJ had a, like, a pendulum. So mm. we thought that would kind of relate to like TE and uh, rigid time so interesting great oh vicky yeah vicky, um phoebe clark um i just related that this is very um it, it, it's just interesting because it it really describes a process that i've gone through this past year in terms of of trying to understand. Um, I just I got through uh, treatment for breast cancer. Mm -hmm. And so I've been having to focus on my body and what my body's feeling now that, now that uh, I'm, I've you know, experienced quite a, a, a few disabilities left over. And um, it, it just really uh, resonated with the you know, the SI experience yeah. of trying to get in touch with my body, which uh, has been really uh, my process for the last um, uh, year or so. And um, what I did, I mean, my intuition, extroverted intuition helps me, help has helped me to add up exactly what I'm supposed to learn from this experience. Wow. It's it's been very powerful, very powerful. So really right. beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for me, it, it, body is kind of far from consciousness for me, but I do get visions and visualizations, and so um, so that's kind of come up for me. Does anybody else have a a, a great uh, anecdote to share about their experience? Can, uh, I'd like to just uh, add that we had a great group, uh, the four of us, there was four of us in the group, and uh, I think all of us knew our type stacks pretty well. Uh, and so there was some great discussion about um, uh, the, what came up for people as far as the image or the movement, and then a pretty clear under, um, discussion around, you know, which functions uh, and what seemed to show up a lot for some of us, it seemed was, uh, and group help correct me if I'm wrong, um, that some of our fifth and seventh functions came up. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Wow. Yeah. That's great. Now, now did, was that experienced as a secondary process or, or was it somehow ego compatible at this stage of life? Do you have a sense of that? Um, uh, okay. Um, hmm. <laughs> uh, well, Phil, I only say yeah, that because yeah. fifth and seventh yeah. would be quote you know shadow depending oh, on what, yeah. whatever. Well, I guess I think what I'm saying is I think what happened is for some of us like I know for me like I you know expert sensing is my dominant so that's my entry point right to then go to often to access fourth function, but in the debrief. Um, um, the group pointed out to me that there um, that there might have been a fifth and the fifth and the seventh uh, playing for me, um, and then when we talked just about some others, uh, it also I, I don't know sure how everyone got to it, but it seemed like we it's like we may have started in our dominant, but we had to um, to open up and right. then. 
things opened up from there in right. the nonverbal movement and uh, body. And not well, actually, there were some people did move, some did movement, and some did some verbal too. Right, right, beautiful, beautiful. That's great. Thanks, Judy. I need to go to mine. I just, I'll just jump in there, yep. having been in that group, and thanks, Judy. That was a lovely explanation. Um, I, I, I'm not sure how widely this was through the group, but certainly for myself, I had a, a very clear experience, but I, I was almost completely unable to connect it to the labels that um, that you gave, the definitions. I thought about each, and it didn't come to me what that answer was, but I was okay with that because that experience was a real experience, and then the group help to debrief, uh, all joined in to help debrief what could be going on from a type dynamics position. So I felt the piece that was missed was the the, the naming and labeling, and maybe that's just because it was very quick to take yeah. on, uh, but that was okay. It was an authentic experience. So that, that's right. what I could add. Well, it, in a perfect world, I would, I would do, you know, one of the definitions and then we do some practice around that. And then we do the second definition and some price so you you know really chunk it together but when you have an hour <laughs> kind of jam it all together and hope that uh, people get a takeaway and get their interest peaked maybe to go follow up and look at it more closely yeah linda you raised your hand you need to unmute yeah thanks i know i know how my participants feel <laughs> <laughs> about the muting um Okay, I, I have a question, so yeah. if, if that's okay. What I don't understand when I look at the, you know, kinesis, kines, that, however that word kinesthesis, is. Kinesthesis, yeah. I would have called it kinesthetic, yeah. but anyway. Okay, so, uh, and, and, and so kinesthetic is awareness of your body, right? Or is it movement, or what uh, does that mean? Proprioception is-, is uh, Well, normally... Robin and I argued about this last night and you were supposed to check it and you didn't. My understanding of proprioceptive is more like what I would call introverted sensation. Whereas kinesthesis to me is more like extroverted sensation. And I think Robin has so switched around and I asked him about that and you were gonna verify it. Yeah, I was just about to say that you, what you just said is correct. Okay, well, so, um... So the, the definition of proprioception, I do know that from being a school psychologist. You know, it, it's awareness of your body in space. Mm -hmm. that I can tell you that much. What I don't, what my other question was about, when you're talking, when it says here introverted feeling and extroverted feeling, are, you're not refer, are you referring to the sense perception of feeling or you know, that perception that you have an emotion or are you referring to the feeling function? Because those are really different things. I love that you. I love that you pick up on this. It's fun. We could go to definitions to Helen back. I'm sure. Uh, I'm showing that slide because I want to establish that, in fact, Mendel did think about these things and made his correlations. I think this book was written in the 70s or 80s. I'm not sure. It's the only reference I've seen to type in all of his work. Usually he does the other language. Um, I was delighted when I found a link to type because it gave me a, a entree to be able to do it at a, at a type conference. Um, so that's a lot of waffling <laughs> to answer your question to say, I don't actually know what he meant. Sure. What I'm counting on as a um, presenter of the session is that people are gonna bring their own understanding or their own fine tuning or their own way of perceiving things. And everybody's at slightly different levels. We may have people here who are into, you know, JP and EI, all that, you know, et cetera. And so just in terms of presenting the session, I'm giving a lot of space for people to kind of bring their own understanding to it. What Mendel meant, I don't know. I'm Facebook friends with him, I might ask, but I don't know if he'll answer me. <laughs> He may not know. He may he not may know. Not, he may not know these definitions the way we do. I mean, I love that you're here because you you get to see like this is what somebody else kind of proposed, and mm -hmm. who knows, you may decide to take that ball and go run with it and say something about it in more depth and detail. I don't know, but um, but yeah, yeah. The the other thing is I for INTP I'm very kinesthetic, and so that. 
I'm a, and, and that's some of that's trained through prepared childbirth twice in, in depth in Belgium, in French. <laughs> and then, and then uh, the other time, you know, the other part of it is, is you know, I, I like to dance. My husband has INTP preferences. He hates to dance. He, he's very auditory and I'm kinesthetic. And so, yeah, you know, I did, thought that seemed to be a variable in the activity for me in terms of what happened. And, I, and I'm not sure, and you probably know better than me, that may be why Mendel kind of stopped talking about the types and focused on these other pieces, the auditory, the visual, et cetera, um, which are more, um, I don't know, elemental, shall we say, uh, and, and more likely understood. Whereas, you know how type is, drop the word type in a room full of people and you're gonna have like a, <laughs> a political dynamite of everybody having their opinion of what that's about. It can get very heady, very intellectual as you know. Um, so that may be one of the reasons why he seemed to back away from that and not use that and instead focus on these other conceptions. Robin, did you wanna add anything to that? No, I think that's uh, pretty tough. As it, like you, I, I believe that Mendel was using terminology in ways that uh, seem initially familiar to typologists, but in, in actual fact, he's using those terms in different ways than we would expect. Now, I noticed that David had his hand raised, and I'm wondering if, if we can just give him a chance to speak. Uh, thanks, Robin. Uh, yeah, you know, this is just fantastic, uh, fantastic session and so thought provoking. Uh, I am up here in Portland, Oregon. I, I've worked at a massage school for seven years and the owner was often going on about this guy, Arnie Mendel, and uh, just today, I'm putting together that this is this is uh, some of some of where that school's uh, body, mind, spirit philosophy came out of. Um, and yeah, I mean, we talk about the cognitive processes and, and stuff, but I, I think because as, as human beings, uh, you know, we are our bodies, and there, there's some connection there to be made uh, with psyche and and uh, uh, body. Uh, I don't know if you've heard of Hakomi work, which is a, a lot of work about storing, and, and that was a Hakomi uh, school as well. Um, so very thought provoking. Uh, I do a lot of body, you know, type stuff, yoga, um, movement, um, sports. Um, so I, there's no room to really uh, go into the depth here. I just want to thank you for highlighting this for me and bring it together. We we stocked that body, that book, Dream, Dream Body. Uh, they say it's from 1982. Um, so anyway, the love coming to these conferences because I get introduced to stuff that I wouldn't even drop into otherwise. So um, just want to express my appreciation for you guys. Thank you. Did you Thank see, you, David. Did you see your image that I stole? And I saw the, the, the picture of the, the, the river. And oh, the, oh, I the stole river. your river. <laughs> I loved it. I loved it. Thank you. Okay. Well, we're just about running out of time here. So let me race through a little bit. Needs to wrap I, up. Ah, where's my mouse? There it is. Okay. So wrap up. So in summary, we can say that process work is a useful model for coaching others. We learned about it in a coaching school called ORSC, which we can talk about later if you want to. It's also a way of working with oneself. It's like working with dreams, but instead it's the dream body. And this overlaps with typology to a certain extent, because doesn't everything overlap with typology when you think about it? But it's not a one-to-one -one relationship, as you've heard through the discussions we just had in the last few minutes. It doesn't quite match. You can learn more about it from Mendel's books, which is what we've been referencing. They're available on Amazon, so you can find them fairly easily. And I'd like to end with this quote from Arnold Mendel. He wrote, neither knowledge, luck, nor intelligence, but expanded sensitivity to the wisdom of one's own process creates the independence of a congruent personality. And now we'd like to know one thing you're taking away from today's session, and we have a special way to do that. So listen carefully to my instructions. I want you to type a word or a phrase into the chat box, but don't hit enter yet. Just wait 
And what we'll do is we'll all hit enter at the same time and we'll make what's called a waterfall of comments going up the chat box. And if you want to, you can open up the chat box by clicking on it and then stretch it on your screen with your mouse so you can see the whole thing as a big picture. So I'm going to give you a few moments to type something in and uh, then I'm going to give you a countdown. So start typing, but don't hit enter yet. All right, let's do a countdown. Are you ready? Five, four, three, two, one, hit it. Woo! <laughs> yeah, isn't that lovely? There we go. Okay, that's great. Okay, so we'd like to thank everyone for being here today. And of course to BAPT for having us, even if it was a year late. <laughs> it's a thrill to be here. Thanks so much, Jerry, for hosting. So we're going to hang around for a while if anyone has any further questions or comments they'd like to share. And Jerry, if you can save the chat for us to look at later, we'd much appreciate that. I'll certainly do that. So yes, so thanks uh, from me very much to Vicky Joe and Robin for bringing something, uh, I think, genuinely new for, for many, if not all of us. Uh, and one of the great things about type conferences, I think, is that you, you, you stumble across a, a whole new way of thinking and looking at stuff. Uh, and this has been a great example of that. So thank you both very much. I'm going to stop the recording here, uh, but uh